Hello and welcome to this Armour Time Painless video. Now there are already a number of videos on the Painless page and the Armour Time website. Go and check them out for how to set up something like this little quadcopter. But this time I want to talk about one specific problem and that is that when you're trying to hover the quadcopter it can be really hard work. The quadcopter always wants to drift in one direction or the other and you always feel like you're fighting it rather than flying it. Now there's a couple of reasons why that can happen. It could be something that isn't set up quite right actually in beta flight on the quadcopter itself, or it could be something that isn't quite right on the radio. It could be both, and either of those can cause this same problem. So in this video, what I'd like to do is go through some of the basic causes of the stuff that will make your quadcopter easier to hover. And this is particularly useful if you are newer to the hobby and trying to master the how to hover it around and make it look nice and stable. Now there's two parts to this video. The first one is rather a basic part, which is just going through the very basic settings in both beta flight and the radio. And then for those of you that want to stay, there's a little bit of advanced stuff at the end about doing something to the throttle so that not only can you control it in the X and Y axis, but you can also much more finely control the height. So let's start first of all in beta flight and talking a little bit about how you can calibrate the model. Now, if you've ordered yours as a ready to fly model from Armatan, all of this has already been done and you might not need it to. However, if you have built your own quadcopter using an Armatan frame or using somebody else's quadcopter, then this might not have been done as well as it should be. So first of all, let's talk about accelerometer calibration. Now inside the little flight controller in here, there is sensors that's detecting when the quadcopter is tilted or rotated in any one of those three axes. Now you have to tell the quadcopter what level feels like, and that is then used as the reference when you're flying. If those accelerometers, as they're called, are not calibrated perfectly, so that the quadcopter knows what level feels like, then it will always drift because the quadcopter will think it's level, but in reality, it will be tilted in one direction or the other, and that's part of the problem. So if we jump into beta flight, let's have a very quick look at where those settings are. So you need to go into the very first page, and here you can see there's this piece that says click accelerometer. So with the quadcopter connected, make sure it is on a perfectly level surface uh, something like the floor can be very good for this and then without moving the quad just click calibrate level and then you should see that both the x and y axis here just in the top left hand corner by the side of the little graphic should read zero and that is one of the big things you need to do it's also a big tip here is when you first power on the quadcopter and you connect the battery is to put it down immediately and leave it alone for three or four seconds. That lets the quadcopter initialize properly for those accelerometers to be calibrated on startup and then the quadcopter is ready to fly. Don't move it around and keep moving it as the flight controller is booting and everything is initializing. That can cause drifting too. Now with that thing done, then the other thing that you need to potentially have a look at is the middle channel position for the aileron, elevator and rudder on your radio. Going into the receiver tab, you can see in here that the middle channel positions for the elevator, aileron and rudder are all exactly 1500. Now, if your radio isn't using high performance gimbals, these numbers might be wandering around slightly and that's perfectly okay. But what you need to do is you do need to spend a little bit of time here using the sub trim in the radio to make sure that these numbers for the aileron, elevator and rudder are exactly 1500 because beta flight will read 1500 as you not wanting to fly in any particular direction. So with the accelerometer calibrated, and also your radio calibrated, and again, use the sub trim. Do not use the trims by the side of the sticks. Never use those when you're flying with a multi-rotor. You'll just get yourself into quite a pickle. Now with those two things done, you should find that the quadcopter will hover really nicely, both front to back and side to side. If, however, it still has a little bit of drift, double check that you have the accelerometer calibration done properly in beta flight and that you have the center of gravity spot on with your quadcopter as well. It should be if you hold it by the middle of the frame where the flight controller is and dangle it upside down that it should just dangle with all the arms level. 
if you find that the front or back part of the quadcopter is dipping down and it doesn't balance in that midpoint, then move your battery so that it does. The final thing that you can do is you can also trim the accelerometer using stick commands. Now this is something that's been inherited back from the very early days of the flight control software that we now call Betaflight. It's great great grandfather, something called MultiWii, actually introduced these commands to help you trim. So this is what you can use instead of using the trims by the individual controls on your radio. And what you do here is you can trim the accelerometer left, right, forwards and backwards. So if you find that your quadcopter is still gently going forwards all the time, then you can put the sticks into the position for trim accelerometer backwards, give it a couple of those stick positions. Again, this is mode two I'm demonstrating for here, and then try a test hover again, and you can go and do that a couple of times until it's spot on. However, realistically, I don't ever find I have to do this anymore, making sure that the radio is in the middle channel position, making sure the accelerometer is calibrated, and making sure that all the channel positions are 1500 when the sticks are in their middle position, it should be absolutely fine. So that's all the basic stuff covered. Now let's talk about some more advanced stuff. Now adding exponential or expo as it's sometimes called to the controls can make it a lot easier to actually control your hover. Now expo can be set in beta flight or it can be set on the radio or you can set it on both, but that's not ideal. Something like 20% Expo can make the controls around the center position a lot less sensitive. And that means when you're doing very finely controlled hovering, it makes it an awful lot easier. But there's one other tip. You can't add Expo to the throttle, and you might find that it's very difficult to keep the quadcopter at the right height. One teeny weeny movement of the throttle, and it starts climbing. One teeny weeny movement and decreasing the throttle and it starts to sink. And it's very hard to have it to float in one position. Now the trick for that is what you can do is when the quadcopter is hovering, use the screen on your radio to make a note of the value of the throttle position. Now you'll find that the hover point will change very slightly through the life of the battery. As the battery gets discharged, you'll need to look a bit more throttle. But what we can do is we can use something called a curve in the radio to set up the throttle so that it's a lot easier to hover. Now, now we know the hover point, then what we can do is we can go into the radio, create a five point curve, set the middle point of those five points to be the point that it hovers at, have the lowest point at zero, the top point at 100, and move the other two points around so that they flatten out the throttle response around that hover point. And that is really adding kind of an exponential for those times when you want to have a really finely controlled hover and when you're practicing. So with those things set on your model, you should find it an awful lot easier. First thing to do, calibrate your accelerometer, make sure that it's 1500 for all the channel positions, make sure that if you dangle your quadcopter, it naturally suspends itself with all the legs at the same height. If you find that it's dangling like that or dangling like that, then move the battery so that the central gravity is spot on in the middle of the motors. That's usually where the flight controller is. If you want to be a little bit fancier, then add exponential to the controls for aileron, elevator, and rudder. And the final thing you can do if you want to be super advanced is you can use something like a five point throttle curve in things like OpenTX to flatten out the throttle rather than have a straight line. You can have it so it gets a little bit flatter around the hover point and that gives you much, much finer control. So hopefully that helps those of you that are trying to figure this out. Be using those tips and tricks. You should find that getting a stable hover that's very easy to control and gives you very fine control is an awful lot easier.